Hi, my name is Roland St. Pierre, and here at Power Integrations, I'm a technical director of product development, and I'm here today to introduce a very exciting product, the EnoSwitch 4 CZ and its companion IC, the Clamp Zero. So what is the Eno, Eno 4? Well, before we start with that, maybe it's easier to start with the Eno 3. The Eno Switch 3 had, was a flyback converter with a, a, a normal transformer, and we had a integrated high voltage primary MOSFET uh, and a primary controller. And we had a flux link, which connected to a secondary controller, which controlled the secondary SR MOSFET and had the ability to regulate the output current as well as the output voltage, all in a single package. Now, typical for a, a flyback converter is the inherent leakage inductance, as in the transformer, which requires the use of an RCD clamp to limit the maximum voltage across the primary side MOSFET to reduce its stress when the switch turns off. What we've done in Eno Switch 4 is we've eliminated this RCD, this dissipative RCD uh, stubber and replaced it with a, an active clamp switch, which we call the clamp zero, which is in series with a, a clamp capacitor and mated it with the controller to the primary side of the Eno switch four, thereby allowing us to operate at higher switching frequency to reduce the size of the transformer, as well as recirculate all the leakage energy back to the output to increase the efficiency as well as maintain and achieve zero to switching in the primary side MOSFET. So I've reset the drawing back to the basic Eno Switch 3 uh, with the conventional uh, primary clamp, and I've highlighted the leakage inductance element uh, to describe why it's, in, why it's important to have this RCD snubber uh, and its consequences to the design. Uh, without, the RCD, without the RCD snubber, so if I just put a little cut here, and I were to operate this power supply, we would see the drain of source voltage across the primary MOSFET, as soon as we turn off, go all the way up to very, very high voltage because this leakage inductance has current flowing through it when it's running, and uh, you can't interrupt an uh, inductor current, and this would charge up the COSS of the MOSFET well beyond its capability, and you would have a extremely high, extremely ringy uh, drain of source voltage waveform, which could potentially damage the MOSFET. So this is the drain of source voltage. This axis is time. And by adding this RCD clamp, now we provide a path for the leakage en energy to actually uh, go when we turn off the MOSFET and we can limit how much the drain the source of the MOSFET actually will, ex will go up to. And so what we expect to see is uh, a, a much lower uh, voltage stress across the primary device because now we've, we've provided a path for leakage energy to be stored and unfortunately dissipated. Now, as we increase the frequency of the power supply, we've actually increased the losses because the, the clamp losses increase as a function of frequency. So I've reset the schematic to a conventional active clamp flyback, uh, and I wanted to describe its operation before I got into the Eno Switch 4 operation with this clamp zero. So similar to, similar to what we had before, we have a, uh, a conventional flyback uh, schematic uh, drawn on, on the screen here where we have a primary side MOSFET controlled by a primary side uh, controller, uh, which interfaces with a high side driver and the auxiliary switch for the active clamp, the same uh, clamp capacitor. Uh, I've illustrated here the leakage inductance of the transformer, uh, which is, being, which is uh, uh, going through the uh, active clamp in order to achieve zero voltage switching in the main MOSFET. On the secondary side is typically a discrete controller controlling the SR MOSFET, a discrete regulator to regulate the output voltage, which interfaces the feedback information through an optocoupler to the primary side to regulate the output voltage. 
So we'll start out with this primary MOSFET turning off. And as I mentioned before, the current through this leakage inductance has to go somewhere. And so this current, which was going through the main MOSFET, now is diverted through the biodiode of the uh, auxiliary device, and it charges up this clamp capacitor. And so I'll draw that as the main MOSFET drive turning off. And sometime very soon after the main MOSFET turns off, in complementary fashion, the auxiliary switch turns on. There's a small amount of dead time between these where the biodiode actually commentates, uh, but the main path for the current is actually going through the channel of the MOSFET uh, to reduce the losses. Uh, and as the clamp capacitor uh, is charged, there's a time when the auxiliary switch is turned off, and at that point, the main MOSFET is turned back on again. And with the adaptive schemes with these uh, very sophisticated uh, PWM controllers nowadays, we're able to recirculate this uh, clamp capacitor to the output in resonance fashion between the leakage inductance and the output capacitor. Now, in order to get resonance between the leakage inductance and output capacitor, typically this capacitor value will be a little bit smaller which will necessitate the, the, the use of an, an output LC filter in order to get the ripple requirements for the output voltage. So I mentioned zero voltage switching. How is it achieved with an active clamp? Well, with precise timing with these sophisticated adaptive control techniques, this leakage inductance resonates with the output capacitor in a resonant manner when the auxiliary switch turns off in order to uh, discharge the COSS to zero volts prior to turning on uh, the main MOSFET. And in this manner, you get zero volt switching in the main MOSFET. This active clamp flyback is referred to a complementary uh, drive scheme because the main MOSFET and the active clamp switch are actually commutated in, act in a complementary fashion. In this mode of operation, the converter can only operate in discontinuous mode or in critical conduction mode and it, it cannot operate in continuous conduction mode. So I've reset the schematic now to an Eno switch 4 and clamp 0 active clamp flyback to describe its operation and how it's different from the conventional flyback, which I mentioned previously. So what we have is, again, uh, the Eno switch 4 with its integrated high voltage uh, switch, and we have the active clamp switch, which is called the clamp 0, which is a companion IC to the Eno switch 4, configured in a um, optimized, uh, very low parts count, high efficiency uh, active clamp flyback. Now, the advantage of an active clamp flyback, which I mentioned before, was the ability to operate with zero voltage switching on the primary MOSFET, which allows us to really increase the switching frequency and reduce the size of the transformer. So the Eno Switch 4 has all those benefits and has an additional benefit in that in the method of the control that we have here, when the primary MOSFET turns off, so just like we had before, we have the main switch drive, which is internal to the controller. The secondary controller actually controls the SR MOSFET, the commutation of the, the auxiliary switch in the uh, clamp zero, or the active clamp switch in the clamp zero, as well as the main uh, switch on the primary side. There's a delay that right before the next commutation of the, of the main switch is when we turn on the active clamp switch in clamp zero. The benefit of doing this type of control rather than the, the complementary uh, control we described before, and this is, by the way, referred to as a, a non-complementary type of control, is that now we're able to operate in continuous conduction mode. So this converter can operate in continuous conduction mode as well as discontinuous conduction mode uh, and have all the benefits of zero voltage switching for the entire range, which is very beneficial for freeing up the, the actual design for a very wide range requirements for, let's say, a USPP uh, converter, which has very wide input voltage range as, very, as well as very wide output voltage range. Uh, and we'll get into the details of how this, this non-complementary type control uh, works and how we achieve zero-volt switching 
as well as mitigate continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode. So in Immunoswitch 4 and Clamp 0, we're actually bringing all the benefits of Immunoswitch 3 into this control topology. The same sliding frequency, so we can maintain a very flat efficiency over the entire load range. And this mode of operation does not need burst mode, which is required for the complementary type uh, active clamp flyback, which we described previously. Uh, one of the drawbacks of burst mode is its inability to maintain very light uh, like ripple on the output, as well as sometimes audible noise, uh, and a very complex control strategy in order to mitigate zero to switching and light load performance. You don't have to worry about any of that with the Eden Switch 4 and Clamp Zero. So I've redrawn the Eno Switch 4 and its companion IC, the Clamp Zero, in some operational waveforms uh, in discontinuous mode and in continuous conduction mode to highlight the operational differences and how it, op how it achieves zero volt switching for the primary device. We'll, start we'll first start out with continuous conduction mode. As we can see here, we have the main switch drive, uh, which is internal to the controller. This HSD signal, which controls the clamp zero, is shown here. And in normal operation for the Eno Switch 3, the secondary controller sends a FluxLink command to turn on the primary MOSFET. But on Eno Switch 4, this FluxLink command actually commands to turn on uh, this HSD signal to turn on the clamp zero active clamp switch in order to uh, resonate the uh, leakage inductance and clamp capacitor. right before the commutation of the primary device. There's a very small amount of delay between the turn off of the clamp zero and the turn on of the main device, which is programmable externally with the current, with a little uh, resistor, which is tied on the HSD to optimize this timing. As we can see here, we have zero voltage switching uh, only by the means of leakage inductance and this clamp capacitor. And we have a continuous conduction mode waveform and again, prior to the next uh, switching cycle event, the HSD signal uh, asserts to turn on the active clamp switch in clamp zero, prior to turning on the main device again, and we have a uh, continuous mode waveforms. This resonance is only with the leakage inductance and the clamp capacitor. Now the problem with using uh, this mode of resonance uh, for a wide range is that the leakage inductance is a very small value, is typically a very small value. And the amount of energy you need in order to achieve zero voltage switching for high line mains increases because the voltage across this uh, MOSFET uh, is increased. So what we do in discontinuous mode is we actually use the V-pin line information. So on Eno switch three and Eno switch four as well, there is a V-pin which we're actually able to sense the line voltage. And we detect at high line, where we're most likely going to be operating in discontinuous mode, to change the timing of this HSD signal, to introduce more delay between the ending of the clamp zero uh, drive and the main switch drive, in order to give uh, resonance between the magnetizing inductance and the leakage inductance and this clamp capacitor in order to have more energy available to achieve zero volt switching. So very similar to the non-complementary drive scheme that we've been, we've been describing before, the clamp zero signal is asserted, it terminates, there is a fixed delay, which now allows both the magnetizing inductance and the leakage inductance to resonate with the clamp capacitor to give more energy availability for achieving zero volt switching. So the drain voltage will resonate down to zero prior to the main switch turning on at zero volts. So I want to describe uh, this HSD signal timing and, it's, and how, it's, how it operates. So in continuous conduction mode, the HSD signal is chosen to be one quarter of the resonance cycle of the leakage inductance and the clamp capacitor. Whereas for discontinuous mode, which is typically at high line operation, we select this HSD signal 
pulse width to be one quarter of a quarter resonant between the magnetizing inductance, by the way, it's plus leakage inductance, but leakage inductance is typically much smaller, and the clamp capacitor value. So the EN switch 4 actually controls this HSD time based on monitoring this VPN signal. So you have the optimal timing to achieve zero voltage switching in both discontinuous mode at high line uh, input conditions, as well as be able to operate in continuous conduction mode at low line and having uh, the dependence on just leakage inductance at low line and having the benefit of having also the magnetizing inductance, which augments the amount of energy available to achieve zero voltage switching automatically inside the controller. So we've looked at the detailed operation of the Eno Switch 4 in its companion IC, the Clamp Zero, uh, in its embodiment for an active clamp flyback, and how it differs from conventional active clamp flybacks, which use a complementary type of control and secondary side resonance, and how we've overcome that by using a non-complementary type of control, which facilitates us being able to operate in continuous conduction mode at low line to reduce the peak currents of the switch, which also benefits the EMI filter and the bridge as far as losses and increase the efficiency and overcome some of the challenges of having just leakage inductance for the main resonant element in order to have enough energy to achieve zero voltage switching even at high line. Though all this is accomplished within the IC, maintaining the same flat efficiency, very high efficiency at light load, very low no load consumption. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Visit us for more information at power.com.